right now. Greetings, internet. I'm Richie James, aka Warlord UK of the Northern Drunk Tank. And first of all, let me apologise. I feel like crap. I'm full of some sort of cold. I'm all bunged up. But the show must go on, as they say. So today I'm going to be streaming some Thomas Was Alone. Now, for those who don't know, this game is just Hello, absolutely phenomenal. Although I played it most of this game, uh, Thomas Was Alone. Thank you uh, for buying a copy. That's very kind of you. Um, unless you pirated it, in which case, please go and buy a copy. Um, it's in sales quite regularly, thankfully. It's weird speaking to you from the past. So, uh, this is Thomas. Uh, he is, well, he was named originally by the community. Um, the game's name, Thomas, was all. So this, this is step one, side-to-side -side movement. Um, if you're a platforming game fan, it should not present too much of a challenge to you. But here it's really just about easing the player into the way the world works. Seeing gravity for the first time, understanding how falling feels. And then actually kind of talking about that in the, in the voiceover to kind of have a bit of fun with it. It's also jumping um, had to be right. It's, it's kind of the main way you interact in this game, obviously. I did a lot of research. I got kind of obsessive about it. It took me, I was still fiddling with the jump physics. I'm going to turn that commentary off. Sorry about that. <laughs> I did have a second playthrough while I was listening to the commentary, so... I think... What if there was some kind of... A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real... I said so I'm playing this because it doesn't require much thinking, and especially in the early bits, it's this very easy to do. a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any... It's a platforming puzzle game. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. At the moment, I had other characters to uh, play with. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. The only ever played classic platformers to be able to get through this game. There's a few basic oh, some collectibles. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. Box sort of, uh, no amount of observation or obsessive note level. level. I mean, first number, like, this is like zero level. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training. Out of the water. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Uh. Oh, there we go. Our first companion. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Pitch with their corresponding holes. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually. Not technically graceful. It's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Ah, 
charming. Can help each other out, which is the more object to see. Off. And sorry if I'm sniffing a lot and sounding a bit drained, it's just a bit of man flu, you know? <laughs> could get to it, which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Great, great. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly. Yeah. But not too complicated. It's getting more difficult obviously as time goes on. Was this it teaches good? you in a good enough way. On the surface, okay. it did not seem good. Chris was pretty Thomas scared. Well. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. And we'll go the other way. Caps. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm gonna cock up a lot of this. All on the man flu. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up. Oh, only for a few levels. Oh. Ah. Where will we go? Attached to a red square. It's not part of characters. Ah, hand down. Level done. Oh, third person to join us. John knew. He knew that this was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. Huh? Lovely jubbly. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Oh, that's cool. It's a lovely simple little puzzles. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. Decided to press the switch to 
let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. Their character jump there. Bottom there, that's one of those little holes. There's there the collector. We've done 100% walkthrough of this, so. John was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. And myself. so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. Sometimes you can just fall off.
immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Lovely jubbly. How everybody can go across. Plastic. This was interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was hey. sure the dots would be lost. But he was happy to guide them to triumph. what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. Um, he decided... Well, was how Claire would die. She knew it would happen eventually. She was rubbish at jumping, and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realized she had superpowers. Oh, she has the ability to float. She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water, which was her superpower. Fantastic. Get there in the end. All right. Fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Uh, Claire do you needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Check her way. It was rubbish. I love you, Oh, 
Claire arrived just in time. Which was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. Water began to rise. Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Or was she more the Lone Avenger type? Yeah, she liked that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. Here's all the lost ones again. The others told Claire that staircases were a bit of a fixture here. Claire wondered why the world made it so difficult. on this does make up how great this game is. Everybody off, everybody off. There we go. A villain who would show their true colours at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. He seemed stroppy enough, and his jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. Yes, Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. Somewhere? Plotting Claire's downfall? Claire was honest. And she had to be because she was a superhero. This was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. Moving 
platforms over water, eh? Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. They were doing really oh. well. Claire hoped she could get them all across. John was fully aware he could do this alone. Thomas hoped he'd never have to. Claire was alone, which was odd, because she wasn't meant to be alone. She needed to be where there were rectangles to save. Being the only superhero in a given space kind of <laughs> defeats the object. Spikes? Oh, British Webber. Claire avoided them. She decided they were most likely her kryptonite. Not the rubbish red kryptonite either, the proper radioactive green stuff. Happened? There we are. Wow. Deja vu. The world was repeating. And this time Thomas was here. Claire felt something had gone wrong. There was a disturbance in the force. Something had altered the matrix. The world was reacting to their progress. It was amassing its forces. It was plotting against them. Claire finally had a nemesis. Oh! Hey, Laura was pleased this one was behind a wall. Maybe he'd never know what she could do. Maybe, maybe, they could just have a conversation, hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do, which would never happen so long as they stayed separate. Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time, and it had kept itself Wink. to itself until now. Oh. As the square, who had shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura, she began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounced too, and then they disappeared when her back was turned. 
Only the ominous pixel cloud ever remains, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. I would eat everyone. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there, on another platform or something. Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. At some point, he would definitely tell her. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about, though. Yeah, probably best to wait. Longer, but Chris was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. You got told. On you go. If I say it out loud, he told himself, he didn't want to scare her off. Oh. 
Sorry. The others seemed suspicious of Laura and the eager-looking pixel cloud of death which seemed to be watching her. Sure, they'd use her inherent bounciness to reach slightly higher jump points, but they wouldn't strike up a conversation with her. Chris found them rude. Rude? And always there. ominous black cloud though you give it cross and wouldn't drop it. Who's that cloud guy? Why is he following us? What's that rumbling hungry sound he keeps making? Chris, can we just leave Laura behind? now. Just... Wait. There you go. <laughs> Eventually come into sync. Hmm? 
Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seemed to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. cloud was getting closer. It was spending more and more time hovering around. Laura could tell it was making the others uncomfortable. Okay. I mean. Yeah. Hey, that's where I'm going to call this stream. From the first three full sections of it. I really am not feeling well, so I need to go and rest again. But thank you everyone that's watched. Hope you've enjoyed the game. Definitely worth going out and buying it if you can. I've played this through now two times already. Once with commentary, once without. Got all the collectibles, all the achievements on it. It's not a long game. You can probably get it done in just a few hours overall. And on a normal day, I'd have probably played the entire game for you. But I'm just feeling rotten and I don't want to start coughing and sneezing all over the stream. But, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Richie James of the Norman Drunk Tank. Feel free to get in touch with us on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter. Also check out our past stuff all over YouTube at the Norman Drunk Tank. Um, and also at 4 o'clock today, which is about 15 minutes time, uh, the next part of my Why I Love Gaming series comes out. It's part 3 of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the full 100% playthrough. That'll be out in about 15 minutes if you want to go and watch that over on YouTube. Feel free to get in touch with us about anything. Uh, Sean won't be streaming tonight, but I think he's back on tomorrow. But just uh, check out on Facebook. You'll get all the information there. But, again, sorry for the short stream, but uh, I'm really not well. Thanks for watching anyway and putting up with me. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you on Monday.